This video will help you understand how to set up your baseline cell modem, or BLCM4G. Here's what's in the box. The installation and user guide, wireless activation information, an antenna cable, and a short ethernet cable. Here's the salt shaker antenna and the cell modem itself. Before we install the modem, we need to activate it. For that, we're going to need the modem information and then visit the HydroPoint webpage. On the activation form, you'll need to input the account name, the billing address, the contact name, the billing phone number, and then the billing email address. Remember that activation card? It is the cell modem SIM number and the cell modem serial number. Next, enter the controller name, the site name, and then agree to the listed terms and conditions. Enter your name and then use the mouse for some semblance of a signature. After submitting the form, allow a day or so for the activation to be processed. Now that I've gotten notice that my cell modem has been activated, I can install it. The first thing we're going to do is power down the controller at the circuit breaker by unplugging it or by removing the plastic cover and unplugging the orange lead from the transformer. Now I'll pull out the rubber plug from the antenna hole and install the salt shaker antenna. There's no need to torque it down, just snug it down lightly with the wrench. Before mounting the cell modem, connect the short ethernet cable to the ethernet port. Take the small antenna fitting and connect it to the adapter labeled WWAN main on the modem. Connect the modem with two screws to the inside top of the enclosure. The weather stripping material gives some extra support to the back of the modem. Connect the other side of the antenna cable to the salt shaker antenna. Like before, just snug it down. Then connect the modem power cable to the power board at the port labeled COM3. For this demonstration, I pulled off the front panel, so I'm going to reinstall that, connect the ribbon cable, and the ground wire. Now take the other end of the ethernet cable and connect it to the port on the back of the display board. You can use the included gray cable clip to secure it if needed. Power the controller back up, and the hardware installation is complete. With all communication methods, make sure the antenna and ribbon cable are connected before powering up the controller. Powering up without an antenna or ribbon cable will damage the device and void the warranty. Now it's time to configure the cell modem. Begin by turning the dial to the network position and open up communication setup to ensure that it's set to ethernet. Then go to base manager server setup and verify that server URL mode is set to DNS lookup and press the enter button to connect to base manager. Notice at the run screen at base manager, it says connected. You can also turn the dial to network and base manager server setup to see that base manager status reads connected. All of this information tells us that our cell modem is working and that we're connected to base manager. If you haven't connected your controller to base manager yet, use the authorization code that shows up so you can add your new controller to an existing base manager account. You'll need to follow the instructions along with the code, so it's a great idea to take a picture of it before heading back to the office.